Hey everybody, welcome to the Wisco Boater channel. My name is Chad. This is another episode of uh, my vlog series. This will be number three in my uh, Wisco Boater Daydream series. And today I'm gonna talk about the top three uh, go fast boats, in my opinion. Now, I'm here in my office at home and we're in the midst of the uh, whole coronavirus thing. Since I'm not going to be really going anywhere, to uh, talk about some of the other things that I that I want to vlog about. I'm just gonna uh, stay here in my office and I'm gonna show you the three go fast boats that I absolutely love. Now I'm an old school guy when it comes to go fast boats. The new boats are awesome. They've come a long way. There's a lot of advancements in power and interior quality and gauges and screens and all that stuff that's in the new boats. But when it comes to go fast boats, my heart lies in the 19, the mid 1980s. And because I grew up in the 80s as a kid, these boats, a couple of them are associated with the show Miami Vice. I remember as a kid on Friday nights, uh, my parents watched this show and I, I have to thank them for, for getting me into Miami Vice because I have a whole series on DVD and every couple years I st I'll, sit and I'll sit down and I'll watch the entire series. Um, so I've got a real soft spot in my heart for Miami Vice. I got a real soft spot in my heart for two out of these three boats. And now the first one that I'm going to uh, show you here is not a Miami Vice boat, but this boat is one that I remember as a kid driving. We were down in Florida. Um, I don't think we lived there at the time, but I, we may have been on vacation. This boat was sitting at a local boat dealer and we would drive by it almost every every time we went somewhere on this vacation because we were staying with my aunt and uncle. When I saw this boat, I thought, oh, I absolutely fell in love with it. Here it is, the 1988 Fountain 12 meter Lightning. Uh, this is a 40 foot boat. It's the Fountain 12M for 12 meters. Uh, I think they're also uh, called the ICBM. Um, fountain labeled the ICBM as in uh, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. <laughs> the uh, ICBM uh, was just an absolutely beautiful boat. The boat here that I'm showing is this is a, this is not my picture. I have a picture of this of this boat um, somewhere in my photo archives, and it, it's not all that great of a picture, so there's no real reason to show it. But this boat that I'm showing is the exact same boat that I took a picture of back in uh, the probably late 1980s, I would guess when it was closer to new. It might have been early 90s. I don't remember exactly, but uh, very cool that I found this uh, this series of pictures of, of this boat. I don't have any video, uh, really good video of the uh, Fountain 12M um, because there really isn't anything on YouTube of of these boats other than sales sales videos. There's no action videos, but uh, I just, I, this boat is one of the very first boats that I can remember uh, as a kid just look, looking at and just totally falling in love with. Now, this, this, these were powered by uh, twin 502s at the time. I believe they're around 460 horsepower each. You know, they've got a, they've got the regular, uh, you know, cabin amenities that a lot of these boats had back then. Not near as nice as they are today, but just something about this, this boat, the shape, the how the bow comes up to that, that point. I love the, uh, the arch that's on it. Um, I, I really do kind of miss that in the, uh, the newer boats, even though they probably look a little sleeker. That arch is just, uh, I just love it. And you'll see all three of these boats have that arch. The number two boat on this list, either way you look at it, if I'm counting up or down, number two. So I'm going number three first. This is number two. Uh, this is the Chris Craft Stinger 390X. So the Stinger 390X by Chris Craft. This boat has just some amazing classic lines that uh, look good from any angle. Uh, I love the the teak wood lined windscreen. It's uh, very angular, very, very 1980s. There's a decent amount of room in this boat too. It's not necessarily set up for offshore racing. It's, it's a little bit more set up for um, cruising comfort, both in the cockpit and in the cabin. I was going to try to show a scene from uh, from Miami Vice showing the boat uh, making a run to the Bahamas, cutting through waves nice and smooth, but copyrights are going to take care of that. So won't be able to show that, but here's a picture right here of that scene. And if you get a chance to check this out on YouTube, 
it's uh, the song that goes with this this scene, the boat's gracefulness cutting through those waves. It's just amazing. Great performer. Uh, this boat had uh, uh, twin 370s or twin 400s as options. A 39-foot boat and uh, just absolutely beautiful. And I uh, really don't make them like this anymore. Now, my number one boat... Here we go. Number one, drum roll, please. I actually have a print hanging in my office here. And there it is, the Scarab 38 KV. This boat is one of those boats where if I could find some way to have one, uh, I would <laughs> I'd try to find some way to do it on a heartbeat. They made, there are there, the actual boat in this picture is actually about 30 miles away from me. Uh, last I knew anyway, was in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Now the Scarab 38 KV. Okay, so if we look at the, uh, the KV registry, as I'm looking at right now, they made 103 of these boats over the course of five years. 42 of them were Miami Vice Editions and 61 of them were Standard. Of the 42 uh, Vice Editions, nine of them were used for the show uh, and 33 of them were sold to the public. I think that there were only, f out of the nine that were for the show, I wanna say that I think about three or four of them were used, actually used on camera on the show. There's a website called 38scarabkv.com. It's run by a, a few guys, uh, Wayne Kolb, Randy Ott, T Tony Irardi. They keep track of these boats. They know exactly where every single one of them is, uh, the condition that they're in, if they're for sale or not. Of the 42 Miami Vice versions that were built, unfortunately, sadly, only about half of them, about, I think half of them, 21 of them, are known to uh, survive to this day today. Uh, other ones have been uh, wrecked or just set out, left to rot, and it's really kind of a sad thing. But uh, of the 21 that are known to exist, half of those are in need of restoration. And there's about 10 of them that are, that are seaworthy at this point. The Scarab 38 KV, oh, I just absolutely love it. Now, these being my top three go fast boats, honestly, you know, I'd love to, I'd say I would love to try to find a way to own one of these 38 KVs. I wouldn't do it unless I, unless, was, unless it was like a second, maybe even a third boat, because I would never want to give up the option of having um, an express cruiser or a trawler of some sort that, that, uh, that we are able to stay on, have, you know, enjoy a weekend or a week or a long cruise on. You just can't do that on these boats. I mean, you can spend the night in them, but they're just, uh, they're not comfortable um, overall, as far as, you know, spending an entire weekend on, you know, weather, being out on a boat, like one of these go fast boats, the weather is always a concern because they don't have a whole lot of, of, uh, places to get out of the weather, unless you've got a full camp camper canvas cover. And I don't know that any of these have that. I know guys have put bimini tops on them, but, um, I don't know that there's any, uh, any out there that have the, the full weekend capability. So would I own one, any of these three, probably not. But, um, you know, if there ever was an opportunity to own a second or third boat like this, uh, I would certainly, if all of a sudden I became wealthy and were, was able to do that, I certainly would try. So let me know what you think of my top three uh, offshore go fast boats in the comments below if you'd like. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching this episode of the Whisker Boater Daydream vlog. We'll see you next time on the Whisker Boater channel. Happy boating, everybody.